I'm fucked. Jason's a mama's boy. I said it. Oh my god, I made that. I can't believe I made that. What's up my dudes, it's Turd, and I got another educational video for you guys. This one's going to be about how to loop and rotate at Azeroth's resting place, home of Mr. Philip Ojimo, also known as, or more commonly known as, the Wraith. Now, before we get into the educational commentary gameplay, where I absolutely destroy a rank 1 Michael Myers, let's talk about Azeroth's. Azeroth's resting place can be one of the most survivor sided maps in Dead by Daylight. However, it could be killer sided if the survivors fuck up and start repairing generators in a non-strategic order. The map layout is in the shape of a capital I, or an hourglass. You're going to have three generators that spawn on the top portion. One that's going to spawn in this jungle gym tile right here. You're going to have one that spawns in these two tiles over here, which are going to be like debris or trash that have a couple pallets. It could even spawn next to the bus or the tractor. And then you're going to have one that spawns in the tiles around Kill Shack, or even inside Kill Shack. The bottom portion pretty much mirrors the top portion. You're going to have a generator that spawns at this jungle gym right here. You're also going to have a generator that spawns at these two tiles over here that are pretty much dead zones and very unsafe. And then you're going to have a generator that spawns at these tiles around the main building, which is like the office or, I don't know, gas station, um, stand, whatever it is. And then finally, you're going to have a generator that spawns in the middle section where you have a row of four extremely safe jungle gyms. Let me show you how quickly survivors can fuck themselves, especially on this map. Let's say the killer spawns in at Kill Shack. Well, the survivors are gonna spawn on the other side. So maybe two of them are in this jungle gym right here. Maybe one's at the main building. Maybe one's over by the dead zone area gen. It doesn't really matter. There could be two at the jungle gym, two over at the dead zone area, maybe up on a hill. They're just gonna be on the opposite side of the killer. Survivors tend to work on the first generator that they see, and that's a habit they need to break as soon as possible. And in some cases, yeah, that, that is the right play, but on this map especially, it's not. So the killer is going to come down, and he's going to find a survivor, and he's going to chase them. He can only chase one at a time. The amount of time that it takes the killer to get into chase, hit the survivor two times, pick up the survivor, find a hook, and hook the survivor should be plenty of time for both of these gens to be finished. Unless, of course, the survivor that's in chase is a complete potato. And the survivors are probably thinking, Fuck yeah, man, we got two gens done, and he only got one hook. Woohoo! But really, a smart killer would say, fuck that generator down there, they can have it. Play off these four generators, and look at how much smaller the map is because of that. And he can have a three gen strat this way, this way, or this way. And it's going to be extremely hard for the survivors to come back from this. So which generator has the highest priority to be repaired first? Most survivors would say that the middle generator has the highest priority. And on most maps, that is the case. But on Azeroth's, this map right here, that is not the case. Let me show you why. So if you were to get the middle generator repaired first, theoretically the killer could play to either side and have a 3 gen strat. Alright, so these two generators have the highest priority. If you could repair both of these generators first, then there is no way that the killer will have a 3 gen strat. And he's going to have to patrol the entire map to stop you guys. So now let me show you how to make this strategy work. Now obviously if you're going in solo or you don't have a four man swift, you can't rely on the randoms knowing how to do this strategy. But if you are going in with a coordinated group and you can communicate, this is what you're gonna wanna do to make the trial that much easier for you to survive. No matter what side of the map you spawn on, whether it's the top portion or the bottom portion, you want two survivors to work on the middle generator of that portion. The other two survivors are going to head towards the middle generator at the opposite side of the map. Now these survivors are going to have to evade around the killer who is heading in that direction. But as long as they don't touch this middle generator, the killer should just walk right by them knowing that the survivors spawn on the opposite side of the board. Now the killer can only chase one survivor at a time. So whichever survivor he chases, that survivor needs to pull the killer up to the middle section and utilize these jungle gyms using the pallets and windows. And the chase doesn't have to be long at all. A 30 second chase right here is plenty of time for both generators to be completed before the killer can get onto another survivor. Now you might be thinking, what if one of the two survivors trying to evade the killer gets spotted and in chase? Well, let me show you that before we jump into the gameplay. The survivor that's in chase only needs to loop the killer for 10 to 20 seconds 
before the first generator will pop because those survivors have been working on that generator since the start of the trial. Once that survivor in chase hears that generator pop, he's going to lead the killer now down towards that section of the map. Meanwhile, the survivors that just finished this generator are going to head to the other side of the board and help the other survivor finish that generator. And the three of those survivors will finish that generator with plenty of time to go save the other survivor that was hooked before that survivor goes into struggle phase. So yeah, let's jump into the really game rough. pro. We gotta make sure we don't 3-gen. We spawn in and I instantaneously see the tractor right here and the start of the jungle gym middle section row right here. So now I know I spawned right here. I also see a generator and a survivor that spawned in with me. And that survivor is going instantaneously to this generator. Now, unfortunately, the Swift that I am playing with currently, I've only played with them a few matches at this point. And so they don't know the strategy that I talked about earlier. So I'm going to head over to the generator that has the highest priority and check to see if the basement is in kill shack Basement's first. in kill shack. How'd you miss that side? Now, the fact that I don't see any survivors working on this generator in front of the kill shack, I know that they both spawned at the jungle gym over here and are probably working on that generator together. So because of this, I'm going to try to evade the killer and head towards the other side of the map to work on that generator. Now, I don't hear a terrier radius and my spine chill goes off. So I can assume that it's either a tier one Michael Myers, a ghost face, a cloaked wraith or a little miss piggy oh. sneaking around in crouch position so i'm going to take a peek and see if i can see who it is it's michael myers but we can win now i evaded michael very easily but because of where he's heading he's heading for okay. whoever was working on that gen that i spawned next to the priority changed and instead of me going all the way across the board to work on the generator in the middle i'm going to work on the middle I'm generator the middle in gen. these jungle gyms and i'll explain why the killer has barely gotten into chase, and we already popped a generator. Now, it's unfortunate that it's not the generator with higher priority, but these survivors don't know that strategy, and so I don't fault them for it. If Michael would have gone to the generator that had two survivors working on it, he can only chase one survivor. So the other survivor can continue to work on that generator, and now two generators would be finished on the top portion of this map. And I would have gone to this generator to break up any three gen strat and give us a chance to survive. But because Michael went to the generator that had only one survivor working on it, I know that generator will not be completed, which means only one one generator will be completed on the top portion of this map. So it's important for me to work on this middle generator to break up any three gen strat. And as long as the next generator that we complete is on the bottom portion of this map, we're gravy, baby. Okay, make sure that you guys who just popped that go to the other side of the board. Otherwise, we will three gen ourselves. So I let my teammates know the importance of working on a generator at the other side of the board. You know, you hear me talk about situational awareness in almost all my videos and being able to adjust your strategy on the fly and having a high IQ of the game is what makes me better than most players in this game. And it's what I want my viewers to to start Where paying attention to and start learning because looping and 360 jukes and any of the other juking techniques that you learn that comes with just playing the game and experience. But having a high IQ and, and situational awareness that comes from, you know, putting in the extra work and watching videos of streamers or playing both killer and survivor and reading what the perks do and, and things like that and that's what i think you know people uh, need to start on. doing if they want to get better at this game now my spine chill goes off and i hear the killer's terry radius now at tier 2 michael has a terry radius of 16 meters which is really close now if i was on this generator by myself i would have already gotten off but because i have another teammate here with me i'm hoping that myers is chasing a survivor and we could greed for this generator and try to repair it before he gets to us i like this because is running away from a shark oh fuck me right up in the ass myers is stalking me and his stalk is different than ghostface the closer he is to the survivor that he's stalking the more intense the progress is so i'm kind of fucked here Fuck, he's teared up. I do a sidestep tech to make a miss, but unfortunately I run into a fucking Actually, wall. So there's nothing fine. I can do here. I'm, I'm, I'm going down. You know, I was caught in a very bad position right there, and mm -hmm. there's literally nothing I can do. Michael, you got me this time, but I'm going to get you next time, motherfucker. That gen, if you can pop it. Oh, fuck, he's going to... He's right here. Careful, 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 careful. The random survivor in our squad sacrifices herself to get this generator done. And I think that's the right play. Um, I would have probably done the same thing. Now, the only way that it won't be the right thing is if Myers proxy camps both these hooks that are going to be really close to each other, and we die because of that. 
you know, and if he proxy camps both of us, that's a viable strategy and probably one that I would do. And a lot of survivors would say, oh, he's face camping, but it's not face camping. He's proxy camping. That's a big difference. But he instead goes for the survivor out in distance, which tells me that he has barbecue and chili. We got two survivors on a hook and one survivor in chase and way off in a distance. Let me help you out with that. You can see my partner, Evie, working on a generator. Now, it's important to get a generator done on that side of the board. However, the priority right now is to save both of these survivors. Um, I would say, Evie, if you could come start saving people. Now, based on her distance, I might go into struggle phase. Don't save him, Evie. Just because the other guy's uh, in chase and I'm going to go to struggle here real soon. So the play should be to grab me first, we both go get the other survivor, we double heal, and in 16 seconds everyone's fully healed up. And then we go work on the same generator oh down at the God. other side of the board. Luckily, I didn't go into struggle. And I'm sure when Evie watches this video, she'll go, oh yeah, that makes sense. I'll do that next time. And she'll learn from this. And that's what it's all about. The killer has thanatophobia, which will give a 4% stackable penalty times the amount of survivors that are either injured, in dying state, or on a hook. So right now we have three injured survivors, which will give a 12% penalty towards sabotaging, healing, or repairing a generator. So if the three of us were working on this generator, it would only add four seconds to the total time, and we'd have it finished in 37 seconds. But now I'm going to go heal, and Thanatophobia is going to add two seconds to my total time, making it 18 instead of 16. I mean, Thanatophobia is a useless garbage perk if you ask me. I'm surprised killers still use this. Sloppy Butcher is way better. Queen is about to get hooked, and Michael has barbecue and chili, so he's going to know that the rest of the survivors are down on this side of the board. So I will not have enough time to complete this generator that I want to get done. So I'm going to creep over towards Evie and see how her generator is doing. With Evie finishing this generator, we now have two generators on top, two generators on bottom, two generators left to complete, and so there's no possible three gen, and Michael's going to have to patrol the entire map. We're looking really good. It looks like Michael's heading to the two remaining generators down here. However, my spine chill goes off, and I'm kind of out of position seeing that these two tiles over here are complete dead zones. There's nothing but trees, and with Michael Myers, he can stock up very easy over here. Any other killer, and I would loop him here. But if he tears up, I do not want to be in this area. My only hope is to use obstacles to block him from stalking me and get up to the middle section that has all the jungle gems. He is on my asshole. But if I can get to this middle section, I'm pretty confident I can outloop him. I throw the pallet early because he has to be close to tier 3. Fuck yep. me in the ass, dude. Tier Every 3 Myers makes all survivors that. exposed for 60 seconds, indicated by this icon on the right-hand side of the screen. As I approach this jungle gym, I see a window straight ahead of me which tells me that there's a pallet right here. Now, if the pallet would have been at the entrance of the jungle gym, the window would not be here. The window would actually be on the other side of the jungle gym. So with the current layout of this jungle gym, I'm going to vault the window and look back to see which direction Michael goes. If I see the killer come through the jungle gym and go around this wall or he vaults this window, I'm going to run alongside the long wall and when I get to this point, if I see his red stain, I'm going to cut back through the jungle gym and go play off the pallet. Now at the start of the loop when I vaulted the window, if the killer would have gone down alongside the long wall, then I'm going to cut to the right, go through the jungle gym, and play off this pallet. With most rank 1 killers, they tend to mind game themselves. So instead of just following me, he chooses to double back and go down the long wall. This is why it's important to utilize your camera analog stick and be able to find the killer and react off of what he or she does. Michael thinks I'm going to vault the pallet, so he swings and misses, which gives me enough time to run the exact same loop. Now if he didn't swing here, I would twist around the short wall and when I see his red stain, then I would vault the pallet. Now on this pass, I doubt Michael's going to swing when I get to the pallet, so my plan is to twist around the short wall and then hit the pallet. So right here I see him stumble to make the turn sharp, so I know I have enough distance to make the pallet now. Now it's time to rotate out, and because I don't see Michael, I need to rotate to the top portion, so I'm going to go to the tractor. Fuck, that pallet's gone. Shit, shit, now, shit. Now unfortunately the tractor pallet's gone, otherwise this would be extremely safe loop. And I hear my teammate cruising along on this generator, so I don't want to disrupt that. It would be more beneficial for me to go down than to interrupt her from fixing that generator. Michael looks like he's chasing me up the tractor, but when I vault the window and I don't see his red stain, I know he went around, and I'm fucked. I'm fucked. The only way for me to survive here is to twist back up the tractor ramp and then vault the tractor window. Oh my god, I made that. 
I can't believe I made that. Oh, oh my dick hurts. Now that right was now. a very good loop for the entire 60 second duration of being exposed oh, under a, Michael's a, tier 3 power. Assuming that the other three survivors won, were working on generators while I was in chase for 60 oh, seconds, so then that means that the last generator should be popping within 20 to so maybe 40 seconds mage, max. So I don't need to go find a generator. My teammates can handle that department. But I will start working on totems because I've only identified two out of the four killer perks, Thanatophobia as well as Barbecue and Chili. Michael's a little too close for comfort right now. So I'm gonna stop rubbing up on these bones. I'll remember that they're here and I'm gonna go search for some other totems to cleanse in case he has no egg. Now he doesn't have any gen stalling perks like Ruin or Corrupt Intervention. I would have seen those at the start of the Yo, trial. So he could still have Pop Goes the Weasel, but I haven't so seen funny. him kick don't a generator after a hook, so I can't identify that that is one of his perks. Though I will tell you that at the end of the trial, I see that he has Pop Goes the Weasel. Okay, the last generator is repaired. I spin my camera around to locate the aura of where the gates are. I know that one's going to be behind Kill Shack, and one's going to be over by the dead zone area. Now these bones that I'm rubbing up on, they didn't start glowing. So if he does you have know it, it's still out there on fight. other totems. My spine chill goes off, so I put myself in a good position to easily evade the killer as he walks by and heads towards the other gate. Now the fact that Michael is not camping the survivor that he just hooked and heading towards the two survivors at the exit gate right, kind of makes me think again that he has no ed. By default, it only takes 20 seconds to open up the exit gate. So these two survivors should open up the exit gate, leave, I'll get the save, open up the exit gate on this side, and leave, and everyone should escape. As I pull Evie off the hook, one of our teammates gets injured. So if he did have Noed, we would know right now with a big alert warning. So I'm a little stumped on what his fourth perk is. It all makes sense here in one second. The random gets the gate open, and our friend Queen goes down. Now, I don't know exactly what went on up there. Unfortunately, Queen does not have a way to communicate with us. She is able to listen, but she can't communicate. They had plenty of time to get the gate open and both escape but something went wrong. Right, now it turns out that Michael has Blood Warden, and with He's Blood Warden, if the killer hangs a survivor while the gates are open, the entity minutes. will block the exit for 60 seconds. All, all Blood open, Warden can only proc once open. per trial, so the gate up on top careful, is blocked careful. by the entity, what? but by me opening the gate after the survivor is already like, hooked, all, uh, this gate will not be blocked on, by the entity, the and we could technically get out if we wanted to. He's However, we do not want to leave our friend stranded, and so we're going to go back into the trial and try to save her. So Evie's in a bit of a pickle here, but luckily she's only been hooked once, so it's not that big of a deal if she goes down again. And with Blood Warden only being able to proc once, it's not yeah. like the 60 what, what number, second entity blocking yeah, of the gate's there. gonna I'm happen like, again. Blood okay, Warden's so got we'll less than 20 seconds out, left on its timer, so I know that this gate's gonna open up very shortly. And Queen just got healed up, so I'm gonna hop into a locker and hide from Barbecue and Chili. For whatever okay. reason, Michael's taking a long time to hook Don't Evie, and because of that, I'm going to actually get out of the locker well, well, and use barbecue and chili screen. against him. By him seeing that all three survivors are up in this area, he's going to come back up here, and the fact that he only has about 20 seconds left on his tier 3 power, that's going to be gone right? by the time he gets up here. So again, these are the type of high IQ situational awareness plays that I'm hoping you guys will pick up on and start putting into your gameplay as well. So if you enjoy how I break down my educational commentary videos and try to give you guys as much information as possible, hit the like button. The more people that hit the like button, the better off I'll be in the YouTube algorithm. And comment, because I get back to everyone. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. I'm almost at 300 subscribers and growing very fast, and I would love for you to grow with me. I'm going to end this video with that I've played against this killer before, Gabby Wabby. And it's She's unfortunate remained. that she got a shitty map, shitty RNG, especially with the exit gates. And I hope that next time I play her, she gets a better map. Because um, I do remember it being a very good game. And unfortunately, she does deep it from this match. But I'm sure she's fine. She'll be a rank one again here in no time. It's Gabby Wabby. I am, sir.